there's more to writing code than just writing code. I need to figure out where to write the code, how to write the code, and then once I'm actually done, I need to document everything that I have written. Fortunately, GitHub Copilot Enterprise can support me throughout the entire process. I want to explore how it can help me out by going through a relatively common scenario that an issue has been filed, I need to figure out where to put that code, how to write it, write that code, and then of course, document it at the end. Let's see how this works. I have an issue here for a conference website. And as the issue says, when a user submits or edits a talk, there's no form of a success message that's being displayed. So the first thing I need to figure out is where's the code that's managing talk submissions. And normally at this point, I'd be clicking around to different folders, doing keyword searches, etc. But with Copilot, I can just ask. I hit the Copilot icon in the upper right, and then just ask in natural language, where are talks submitted and edited in this app? You'll notice that I'm not using any technical phrases here, any class names, anything like that. I'm using natural language. I'm basically just typing in a small user story of what it is that uh, somebody might do inside my app. And Copilot is going through my application and giving me great information about how all of this takes place. So it's letting me know that there's a talk submit view and a talk edit view, and it's giving me links to those files. So if I hit the link for talk submit view, it opens it up inside of a little dialogue. I can explore the source code from inside of here, but let's say I wanna go one step further that I now want to dig a little deeper into the code and see what that code is doing. I hit the link down at the very bottom, and it opens up the file for me. I'm going to close out Copilot for just a moment here because I want to explore the code that we've got. And I see that talk submit view and I see that talk edit view. And all of this is Python Django code. Now let's say that I'm new to the project or maybe let's say it's been a couple of months and I don't exactly remember what this code does. As you might expect, I can ask Copilot. I'm gonna hit a line here. I'm gonna choose the line for my talk submit view and I get a Copilot icon over here on the right side. If I hit this drop down, you'll notice that I get a couple of options. The first one that I'm gonna highlight is suggest improvements. If you're anything like me, and I know I am, I typically like to take any opportunity where I'm having to go back and modify some code to refactor it, to try and improve that code. So having this option right here of suggest improvements is pretty wonderful. So I just go to Copilot, hit that uh, little button, and you'll notice that it's going to give me some really nice information. In particular, it's calling out the fact that I have some code duplication. So it gives me a suggestion that I create a base and then shows me how I should update that talk submit view and that talk edit view to now use that base that it is suggesting. I'm not gonna worry about implementing that for right now, but it's really nice to have that feature to be able to just go, hey, how should I improve this and have Copilot give me an answer. I wanna focus instead on adding in that message and in order to do that, I need to figure out what this code is doing. So let me go back and have it explain it. The explanation comes back and gives me basically all of the information that I might need about how this view is working. It's telling me the classes that it inherits from. It's showing me the different properties that are being set, uh, the functions that are implemented, etc. I've got a really good understanding now of what this code is doing. Let me turn my attention to implementing the desired functionality. I'm gonna once again ask Copilot, how do I display a success message? 
Now, a lot of times in this scenario, I would find myself going off to a search engine, going off to a coding forum, and trying to figure out how to implement this, uh, this particular functionality, or maybe I'm going to go off to docs. And the challenge that I have there is the responses that I'm going to find are not necessarily going to be directly applicable to what it is that I'm building, that I'm going to have to copy that code, paste it in, modify it, kind of hope that I understand what it is that it's giving me, et cetera. But here, I can just stay in the zone. I'm not having to, to leave my uh, repository even. And I'm going to get back a response that's specific to my scenario. So you'll notice that the code snippet that it's giving me is specific for that talk submit view. Now, if I go back through the response here, it tells me that I should be using the messages framework inside of Django. Let's say it's been a little while. I don't know what this messages framework is. I'm going to ask Copilot. And Copilot's going to give me a response. You'll notice here that I'm not just asking or solely asking questions about my repository, but I'm also able to ask generic questions as well and have Copilot give me information about that. So I can now read up a little bit more about how this messages framework works. With the help of Copilot here, I was able to identify where in the code I should put the updates and also the updates that I should be making. The last thing, though, that I want to explore before I start actually writing my code is to ensure accessibility. Because after all, I want to make sure that everybody is able to use the web app that I am building. Now, I know that we have a lot of internal documentation about accessibility. But normally what I then have to do is start digging through a whole bunch of docs, doing some different searches, and it can be a little bit uh, problematic to try and find. Also, sometimes the documentation might be a little bit generic. So I want to make sure that when I'm looking through information that I'm able to ask questions that are specific to my scenario. This is where knowledge bases comes into play. Knowledge bases are sets of repositories that have been indexed by your organization's administrators, so that way you can do this type of querying on that information. I'm going to return back to my application and start up a new conversation with Copilot, and I'm going to put this into immersive mode, which basically just means it's going to take up the entire page. You'll notice this book icon down here on the lower left. And when I hit this, this will show me all of the knowledge bases that have been indexed, that have been built up. I'm going to grab the one for web development, which when I open this up, you'll notice has been trained on two internal repositories based around accessibility, as well as two external repositories for Django and Bootstrap, which is what my application is using. So now whenever I ask questions, it's going to take all of that into account. So let me ask, how do I make Bootstrap alerts accessible? Since that's how I'm going to be displaying out my uh, messages. Ignore the little typo that I have there. It was still able to figure out what I was going for and gives me some really nice information on how to ensure that those alerts are going to be accessible. One big thing to highlight here is the list of references. And what I really like about this is this is now taking me to the source. This is taking me to that documentation from which it was able to glean that answer. While I'm here, I can also start asking other things that right now I know my application is using Bootstrap 4. Maybe I want to start looking at migrating. How could I migrate from Bootstrap 4 to 5? And again, I'm going to get a lot of great information about how I might begin that, uh, that migration from Bootstrap 4 to Bootstrap 5. The primary takeaway from all of this is the fact that I was able to interactively explore the application, explore the frameworks that I'm using, and get all of the necessary information that I needed in one place to start writing my code. With everything that I've got, I feel ready to actually write said code. 
Fortunately, I've already got the repository open inside of Visual Studio Code. I'm gonna turn my attention over to here. So I've got this talk submit view, and I'm gonna highlight this class. And what this does when I'm working with uh, Copilot Chat inside uh, Visual Studio Code is it will set that as the reference point. So now, whenever I'm asking questions, Copilot's gonna know this is specifically what I'm talking about. So let me open up chat and ask the question, how do I display a success message? And chat will give me back the appropriate code. I'm gonna copy and paste the particular parts that I need here. So I know that I need the import messages. Let me paste that in. And then I need this form valid here. So let me copy this and we will paste that right in if I can move my mouse appropriately. There we go, perfect. Okay, so let me tuck away chat here. And I wanna take a look at the code that it gave me. So it's good that it's now adding in that success message, but I wanna make sure that we're displaying the title of the talk here. And that's one big thing that we always wanna remember whenever we're using Copilot is the fact that it is a Copilot, it's not an autopilot. So I always wanna review the code that it's giving me, potentially make improvements to it. So I'm gonna use a format string here to display out the title of the talk. And you'll notice that gray italicized text that's Copilot giving me this code suggestion. It's seeing that I'm doing a format string and it's immediately going, hey, you probably wanna display the title. So I've got my code, I hit tab to accept it, and now it's gonna give me a better message. Let me scroll on down here to my edit talk. I'm gonna go into my form valid and you'll notice that when I just hit enter here, hit a carriage return, it's going to suggest a success message for this as well. The reason that it did that is because it saw what I did up above. We always wanna remember that Copilot is gonna use my current file as well as the tabs that I have open inside my IDE for context. It saw the fact that I was adding in a success message for submit. It made the assumption, I want one for edit and automatically added that in. I'm gonna save my changes, open up the base HTML, which is the template that I'm gonna to use to display everything out and add in a comment to display out my Django messages and Copilot will then make the suggestion to put that into Bootstrap Alerts. All of that looks just fine to me. Let me save this and let me stage all of this. And I'm gonna use the command line to, uh, to do this. So let me say git add dot. Now, at this point, I need a commit message. I need to describe what I've done for the first time. I'm gonna have to do it one more time when we get to a pull request. We'll see that in just a moment here. Now you're gonna notice that inside the command line here, I've got these little sparkles. And these little sparkles are Copilot inside of Visual Studio Code. I'll see these in a few different places. As I'm writing code, if I go over to the source control workbench, I see those right up here. But in my case, since I really like to do things on the command line, I'm going to highlight the one that's here on the command line. And when I hit this dropdown, you'll notice that it gives me a suggestion to generate a commit message. It's doing that because it saw the fact that I use this git add. It knows the next step is probably gonna be a commit. So let's generate that commit message for us. I'm gonna choose that option and it will go ahead and give me a commit message, add Django messages to base HTML and views pi. I'm gonna modify this just real quickly here. This got me close to what I wanted to um, submit and edit flows. That's gonna be the commit message that I want. I've saved that and now let's push that up. So we'll say git push to push that up to our repository. Now again, it's not just once that I need to describe this, I also need to describe this inside of my pull request. 
So let's go back to the repository here, and I see the dialog to create a pull request. I'm going to hit my button, and then scroll down. It's got the commit message, and then right here it's asking me for a description. And normally at this point, I would have to type out everything it is that I've built and try and be as descriptive as possible. But chances are, after you've spent all of your energy writing the code, you probably don't have a whole lot left for coming up with good pull request summaries. That I know that I've seen an awful lot of pull request summaries that are just simply fixes bug. And that's not really helpful. Fortunately, Copilot can do this for me. I'm gonna hit the button here, my little Copilot button. I'm gonna select summary and let Copilot generate this summary for me. I'm gonna create this pull request. And what we're gonna notice is a lot of great information about this pull request. I've got links to all the different files and a really good summary of everything that has been modified inside of this pull request. Let's change my focus to finish out this user story. Up until now, we've seen how I can use Copilot to figure out where inside an application particular functionality has been defined. We've seen how I could learn how best to write the code that's needed, write the code, of course, and then get Copilot to help me out with both the commit message and the pull request summary. But let's say that I'm the maintainer for this repository, and I now need to figure out what changes have been made. And this summary is wonderful, but maybe I want to dig a little deeper into the code. So I open up the files changed, and if I scroll down, I can see everything that's been modified, all the diffs, and let me choose a particular line here. Let's grab line 42 here, and you'll notice I get my Copilot icon. And if I hit the drop down, just like before, I've got my explain. And this explain is gonna break down what the difference is between the pull request code and the code that was already there. So this is really going to help my maintainers out in trying to figure out what has been changed inside of a pull request. I hope that you found all of that helpful and I encourage you to go in and start exploring GitHub Copilot Enterprise. Thank <laughs> you.